Assalamu alaikum everyone. Good morning. Welcome in our today's session, the Ryan Platform for Systematic Review. I hope everyone is doing great. Um, I would like to warmly welcome Dr. Murad Uzani, who kindly accepted to facilitate the session. We are grateful to have the Ryan Project lead to facilitate the session. Uh, Dr. Murad Uzani is the principal scientist with the Qatar Computing Research Institute at Hamad bin Khalifa University. So the session will be recorded so that those that cannot attend because of work or class can watch it later. So the recording will be saved in our Blackboard community to you grad students. If you have any question during the session, you're, you're welcome just to raise hand as usual at the bottom uh, of your screen, the raise hand. So click on that. I will unmute you so that you can ask your question. If you prefer to write down your question, I can read it for you so you can write it down in the chat. Again, I would like to welcome Dr. Murad. Uh, Dr. Murad, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi and good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Munia for inviting me for Qatar University to give me this opportunity to, to present our work about um, what we have done in uh, Ryan. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Hussein Hamadi, Fadil Abukar, and Ahmed Al Magamed, as many as well as the many other people who graduated from this uh, system uh, along the years. So, what I uh, will uh, to do today is to walk you through how you could use uh, Ryan for systematic review. However, before doing that, so what I will, my my uh, talk has three parts. So, where this whole thing starts? So, how does it? Uh, where does it start? And how is it done? This whole thing of systematic review. And then I will go through the Ryan platform and show you how it works for Ryan platform. So, when it comes to where it starts, I mean, it starts as everything else, uh, everything else in life. It starts with questions. So, when you have a lot of questions, you start. So, you have a question in the mind. Okay. Uh, these are just a few examples of questions that people have asked before, and uh, I picked those for a reason. I'll tell you later. So, the, for example, so you have this thing happening in medicine. So, how long does a knee replacement last? How, how do you know how, how long does it uh, last? So, does it last uh, five years, 10 years, or 10, 30 years, or what? And then uh, there was another question that was at the, uh, earlier this year because of the pandemic, and that they wanted to know how does how do health workers I mean, people working in the, uh, in the front line, like nurses, doctors, and others are coping with COVID-19, especially from a mental health perspective. And there is another uh, question, which is, has nothing to do with anything like healthcare or medicine, is that the, someone, a group of people wanted to uh, understand the factors that affect engineering transfer student persistence. How can engineering, uh, engineering student who transfer to a program and engineering persist in the program? So these are many of those uh, uh, questions. You can have your preferred question, for example, I mean, in medicine, I mean, uh, does uh, vitamin C uh, work? Or, uh, for example, for COVID-19, is uh, uh, social distancing and the wearing of masks that really uh, help prevent or uh, diminish the effect of the pandemic and so on and so forth. And these questions that I just mentioned have been answered by writing a, a, a systematic review. So at the bottom here, you see the article that was written by those people who asked this question about the hip replacement, uh, how long it lasts, and they wrote a paper. So in that uh, specific case, they said that based on that, they, what they have seen is that the, we can expect that the hip replacement should last like 25 years in around 58% of the patients. So here is, uh, there is a number, 25 years, and then there's, there's other number, it's at the, almost 60%. So there, these are very specific uh, answers to that question. For the uh, second question is about the impact of um, the pandemic on the mental health of health workers. So they said that it's very bad. So basically, basically they are saying that there is a prevalence of anxiety, depression, acute and post-traumatic stress disorder and burnout. Therefore, uh, during and after the outbreak, it was high for those all of those things. And there is a risk for a long, a long lasting effect. And again, there was a paper that was written in the Lancet about this, uh, which is a major journal uh, in medicine. For the, uh, the third question, which is the primary uh, the persistence of, uh, uh, sorry, the, the title is wrong because I have a different one, but this is about the persistence of engineering transfer student 
So they said that if you want to persist the engineering student in the population, you need to increase pre-transfer academic requirements. You need to do a better job at in uh, integration and uh, providing an inclusive institutional uh, culture. This could be important, for example, for the decision maker at the uh, School of Engineering at Qatar University. So this, so I mean, you don't have to understand exactly what <laughs> this thing is. I mean, those specific questions are about, but the idea you have a question and this is the beginning. And the end is you produce a report, which is a systematic uh, review in this uh, particular uh, uh, cases. So how do you do that? I mean, how do you go from the beginning to, uh, to end? So how well does uh, this question answer? This question and this kind of process that we are going to describe, they are coming from uh, an important uh, uh, area of research, which is called evidence-based practice. Okay, so I mean, the, the, I mean, the simplest definition would be like you base, uh, we should base our practices and decisions on scientific evidence. Of course, I mean, <laughs> someone can think, of course, we should do that. Of course, we should do anything we do. I mean, be, I mean uh, either deciding on the best uh, way to handle a specific disease or the best way to handle the, how people go to school in a pandemic and so on. So it should be based on scientific evidence. However, this is not actually <laughs> happening all the time. And uh, so evidence-based practice uh, is here to uh, provide the basis on how to do that. And then there is a key concept or a key things that is extremely important in uh, doing evidence-based practice is the concept of systematic reviews. Here I put the uh, verbatim uh, definition that I took from uh, this uh, report at the bottom. Of course, you can see different definitions, but they, they are almost uh, the same. So basically you do a review of the evidence Okay, all what has been said, evidence, on a clearly formulated question. Okay, so they have a question, and you want to review all the evidence on this question, but using a systematic and explicit method. So you have to use systematic and explicit, explicit method to do what? You have to identify, select, and critically appraise those uh, primary research. So there is a concept here of primary research, which means that someone has did some research, primary research, and you, the systematic view, like to take all those primary research. You have to uh, identify them, select them, and uh, appraise them. And then you need to extract and analyze, analyze all the data from these studies and include them in your review. And then you can do what we call a meta-analysis. So this is a long process you go through. You, uh, you take primary research done on, your, done on your question and try to figure out what are the best evidence. This kind of evidence-based practice starts mainly for an evidence-based medicine. So it's just simply answering the question, what works, okay? When you go to the, the doctor office, so how does the doctor decide which uh, it is the best course for a specific uh, disease, for a specific condition? What are the intervention that we should uh, take in this specific way. So, and systematically, you try to help the doctor, first by writing those systematic review, and then from those systematic review, we extract what we call guidelines. So uh, they uh, take previous studies, mainly randomized cli uh, clinical trials, if you have been following all the things going on about vaccine for COVID-19 and all the things, you should by now have an idea what a clinical trial means, especially a randomized one. So you take all those randomized clinical trials, that have been done, let's say, for a specific vaccine or a specific medicine, let's say, vitamin C to treat cold, or right? so on and so forth, and then determine which intervention have been proven to work and what remains unknown. So this is one of the questions you, uh, you want to uh, answer: is that what does what works and what that the things that we don't know? Okay. For example, if you take like uh, uh, an example of. Uh, I mean, I like to take the vitamin C as an easy example because there is a systematic review that was written on this. So we know that, I mean, your mother or your father will tell you to take vitamin C if you have a cold. But I mean, why? I mean, why is vitamin C good? So there were many, many clinical trials or randomized clinical that have been done to just study the effect of vitamin C when someone has a cold. Okay? These are primary research. Okay, This is the research that someone is doing on the, in the lab, on the wet lab. And then those people will write uh, uh, an article, will write a, a research paper and publish it somewhere in some journal, okay? You, the systematic review uh, person, the one who wants to 
gather all the evidence, you are going to take all those studies, okay, and then say, okay, does it really work? Or what do we know? What are the side effects? What are the uh, the outcomes? Or does it, I mean, do you get really well? Or is it not true? And the answer could be, it doesn't work, it works, or we don't know. And for each of the answer, you have to uh, give the evidence why you are giving the answer. Sometimes the answer can be uh, qualified in the sense, like we saw before, that is 25 years in 58% of the patients, okay? And there is a long process that you have uh, uh, to go through to, uh, uh, to do this kind of uh, reviews, uh, especially systematic reviews. Maybe yesterday, I think, uh, uh, my understanding is Munia gave a, uh, uh, this, uh, a talk about the process of review, and there are different types of uh, reviews. Here we are talking about the one, the hardest one, which is the systematic uh, uh, review. So here is a, a like, like there are 15 steps in this uh, process. Uh, I'll go just very uh, uh, quickly over all, uh, all uh, those steps. But the, the point here is that sometimes you don't really follow all of those steps. Sometimes you, you, may, you, may, uh, uh, you may or may skip some of those uh, steps. So the first, of course, as I said before, the first step is to formulate the question. So what is your question? What do you want to work on? And then usually you don't want to redo the work that others have done. So if someone wrote a systematic review on that specific question, then you are not going to write your systematic review, except if you don't like what those people did. And then you have to write a protocol of your system, which is basically what are the objective, uh, the methodology for doing the, the review. And then you have to decide on a search strategy. So what are the databases that you are going to search for those evidence? I mean, it could be Web of Science, PubMed, Scopus, and so many, uh, so on and so forth. Usually you get help from your librarian. So you go to your librarian, they will tell you, this is the database that we have access to, so you can use them for your research. And then you take all those keywords and those uh, uh, queries, keyword queries, and you put them into your database. And you get tons of uh, uh, articles and references for your question. And then you need to uh, remove the duplicates sometimes because you get from multiple places, you have things that are duplicates. And then the first thing that you do, you do appraisal. This is the back thing, which is basically what you do. So based on the, the title of the, and the abstract of the article, you want to decide if is it relevant for your uh, study or not relevant. And then you get from thousands of articles, you get to, let's say, hundreds. And then you obtain the full text. And then you do, again, the uh, uh, screening, the, uh, the full text. OK, I will uh, skip the snowballing here. And then you do extraction data. So for those small numbers of articles that you found that uh, seems to be uh, relevant to your question, so you do extraction. You extract all the data that is there. For example, the, uh, the side effect of, uh, uh, of a certain medication. And then you take all the data from different articles, and you, do, uh, you synthesize them, and you do a meta-analysis. And finally, you write uh, your data. So this is a long process, but what we have seen, I mean, when we started to write in, so one of the most painful process uh, or part of this uh, uh, process is the following. So you start from the research, which as we said, and then you take the, your uh, keywords, creates, okay? And you put them in some uh, online database, like PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, and so on and so forth. The problem is that you get thousands of results, and you know that you cannot read all of them, and you know that uh, for your specific systematic review, there are only a handful of uh, articles or studies that are relevant to your question. It could be 10, it could be 20, maybe at most 100, but it cannot be more. So just to give you an example. So imagine I go to the Web of Science. I put this, uh, I'm interested in diabetes and obesity. So I put the keyword. And uh, I get 47, more than 47,000 uh, hits. Of course, I can do some filtering here, but I mean, this is insane. So I, there's no way on earth I will read all of those. So I need a, uh, some sort of a tool, like a funnel, that will take all those uh, 47,000 uh, uh, citation or uh, article and help me just get those that I really need. Okay? And this is what Ryan is all uh, about. So this is a, 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 a web a mobile system. So we have a, a web version. So you can just access online or, or we have also a mobile app for Ryan. So it helps you to produce systematic review in a quick, easy, and intuitive fashion. You can also you can create review, 
you can analyze them, you can uh, work with others because many times when you do systematic you did with the uh, uh, collaborator, this could be another person or even a team. Yes, I hear some. Uh, okay, there's some noise. And then you just need to maintain them. So this is uh, so this is just give you the user interface of uh, user interface of Ryan. So we have an intuitive uh, user interface to uh, help you quickly screen uh, articles. We use visual cues to help you the screening. So which means that I will show you actually an example. Also, we use some machine learning based algorithm to give you a recommendation based on what you do. So we tell you maybe you should include those uh, citation or you should exclude those. We also offer collaboration, as I said, which means you work with multiple people on a specific uh, uh, review. And also, you, we uh, provide, if you are using the mobile app, you can even do the screening on uh, off, uh, offline. Just to give you an idea on how, where we stand, so there was, a, I mean, how uh, Ryan is important nowadays. A study done in uh, the beginning of the year, I mean, that was uh, published at the beginning of the year, I guess they did it last year. They took uh, uh, like 50, actually they started with 60 or so more, but they uh, limited to 15 tools that uh, help people do uh, systematic reviews. I mean, specifically, title and app, abstract scanning, meaning given a list of uh, references or studies by just looking at the title and abstract, how can I quickly de uh, determine the most likely or the most relevant to my study? And Ryan was the number one in front of many other uh, uh, competitors. So, I mean, at the top, you see just the, the, the train is number one with Covidence. Covidence is another tool that is a, a computer of uh, IAN. And at the bottom, what they did, they did a traffic light uh, diagram. So, they took different uh, uh, features. So, they have to go, but uh, the, the idea is that to have uh, the more, the greener, the better. So, which means that if you have a lot of greens, which is the case of IAN that you see here at the, in the middle, then this is good for your uh, uh, software. And the, uh, the, the, the paper describing this uh, study is at the bottom. Okay, just give you some statistics. So we have almost 80,000 uh, users, registered users. These are from all around the world. And uh, you, you get like more than 3,000 people, uh, daily active users on the website. So these people have written thousands of views and uh, work on millions of articles. And they have that millions of decisions, put millions of labels. We wrote a paper on uh, Ryan in the, uh, to the uh, end of 2016, and we got like uh, more than 1,300 uh, citations of that paper. Okay, so this is just to give an introduction on uh, the concept of systematic reviews, how it starts, and the concept of evidence-based practice, and the process that you have to go through. And now I will focus, as I said, our, uh, Ryan is focusing on the uh, one of the most painful part, which is given uh, thousands of uh, references, thousands of citations or articles, how can I reduce them and to get and screen them by just looking at the title and abstract to limit to the things that I uh, that are most relevant to my uh, review. If you have uh, any questions uh, so uh, any questions so far? Okay, I think uh, we should be just feel free to stop me. So we can entertain the question as we go on. OK, so let's say now, how does it work? So I mean, now I'll go uh, as a step by step by showing you a screenshot. But sometimes I will go to the actual uh, system. So usually I prefer to use screenshot because it's more uh, controlled. But uh, I will go and do the, uh, the, the live demo uh, uh, as needed. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, to, uh, to log in. I will go. So uh, assuming that you already have an account, so if you don't, you just go to sign up here. Okay, it's a very simple uh, process. You just give your email, uh, your title, first name, last name, so on and so forth. And, uh, and we just add the captcha so you don't capture, you don't uh, make sure you're not a, a robot, and you just sign up. I'm on, I don't need to sign up because I have my account. I just uh, uh, sign in with my account. And uh, I sign in, that's easy. And I, uh, when I sign in, I hit what we call the uh, Ryan dashboard. Okay, this is a, uh, it has multiple tabs, and each tab corresponds to a specific type of review. Your reviews that you have created will be under my review. Okay, for this particular case, I have eighteen. It only shows one, two, three, four reviews. However, there are more because they, are, they have been. Uh, you cannot see them because they have been archived. If I do show 
uh, archive review, you can see them. Uh, the second tab has collaboration uh, reviews. These are the reviews that I have been invited to work on. So I'm not the owner of that review. Uh, Professor Zbysvedorich is the owner. But me with others have been invited to help in this uh, review. Uh, translation review, so I don't have any. So basically, this is a review that someone asked me to translate. Other reviews, these are public reviews, meaning these are reviews that anyone can see. You don't have to be a member or a collaborator. You can see it. One uh, particular review is of interest is that we took the, there was a, a, some a, initiative to take all COVID-19 related research article and put them in one place and uh, help people uh, work on them. This is not our work, but we took the, the, the data and we put it in uh, Ryan. So this is, you're talking about uh, 300,000 uh, article in this particular uh, review. So I'm not going to, to go this, i just give you an example of things what people do in Ryan. Okay. As I said, so if you want to start a new uh, review, so let's say I will start a review, I'll just call it uh, Qatar University Workshop. I can give some uh, description here. So just for, for the workshop. I mean, it can be anything. I mean, just a free text. And then I create the review. So the first thing I have uh, to do now is to upload some uh, reference file. Remember the steps that I have been given before. So we need to go to some databases. In this particular case, I'll go to PubMed. PubMed is the National Library of, from the National Library of Medicine. This is a major uh, database for biomedical literature. It has more than 30 million uh, citations. So this, you could use your own, I mean, uh, Web of Science. You can use the uh, Scopus, and then you can, uh, usually you go to your librarian, and then the librarian will tell you what are the databases you have access to. This is access to anyone, but there are some other databases that require uh, uh, subscription. You can also use to, there are few online databases that you can use to uh, Qatar National Library. Imagine I do this, and then I put my, uh, I'm just interested in uh, COVID-19 and vaccine or, or and vaccine, anything that has to do with COVID-19 in terms of vaccine or treatment. I put this to uh, this keyboard, okay, and do search. Now I got like 25,000 uh, results. Of course, uh, PubMed itself can help me uh, remove some of the, uh, the things that I don't like, but assume that I don't like that uh, those filtering that uh, PubMed uh, is giving me. So what I will do, I will set those results to, uh, so I have all results. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, there is a limitation here. So it will only give me 10,000, which means that you have to do it multiple times if you want to get uh, the entire set of results, 25,000. But this is a limitation of uh, PubMed. I'll use, the for, uh, use this format. This is very important. I have to use a format. The format is how the, uh, the, the citation will be written in the uh, file that you are going to get. In this particular case, I will, put, uh, I will use PubMed. Okay, and then I create the file. So it will give me the file. The file will be uh, stored here. Okay, and then once uh, it will take a little bit of time to, uh, I mean, there are a few megabytes, so uh, it should be, okay, let's wait a little bit. So let, let it, let it uh, work and then we'll go back to the presentation. So this is the creation of the review I just showed you. As I said, you put a title, it could be any free text. And you uh, and you can put a longer test in the description, okay? And then you upload the the, the file from your local uh, machine, which has the references. Here it is important that you read what you see uh, on the right. These are the different format that we accept to for IAN. So because references, the way they are written inside your file will be uh, there is different format. For example, there is this format called EndNote export. There is the RIS format. There is BigTech. Format there, you can also have a CSV file, which is a comma separated file values, with, but it has to be in, done in a certain way. There is, uh, this is uh, not supported anymore. The, this is PubMed XML, you cannot find it on PubMed, but they have their new format, which I just uh, use. There's another format called Web of Science uh, uh, format, and here we provide some guidelines on help, helping you how to get those uh files in the proper format when you use them in different uh, reference manager or uh i mean actually these are the guidelines we help you 
uh, understand how you get them from the different uh, reference manager or databases. Okay, so there are different migration uh, guys that you can uh, use. Okay, so this is the work, uh, Ryan work mesh. So let's go back to my uh, search. I, I, it's done. Okay, so I do the same operation here, but live. I select my file. It's on. It should be on download, and it should be. Why I don't see PubMed. Interesting. Why else? It's something. Uh, it's on download. I don't say why it's on there. Okay. Ah, I see it. Oh, no date. <laughs> okay, I don't know why, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. So I, I will just upload this one. Okay. And now what is happening? So Pub, uh, Ryan is taking this file. I gave it. This is a just a text file that has the citation that I got from uh, from PubMed, and it is processing it. Okay. And then we'll see when it's done. We'll go and see what's uh, the. For this particular case, so this is the uh, Ryan workbench. This is where you are going to work, okay? To you to do your uh, screening. Sorry. So this is the article viewport. So these are the list of articles, the current view of the list of articles that you have uploaded to uh, Ryan. So we call it the viewport. Okay. Here, well, you see the word moral, meaning that I made the decision. To include this article, it should be shown as Murad. Okay, you see my name because I'm the uh, logged in user. It will be in green. These are labels. I can put tags. I will explain how you do that later on. Here to just give you an overview of what, uh, what we see. So these are the user uh, label here. Another thing is that these are the inclusion uh, ratings. I will explain the ratings later on. This is the thing that uh, comes with the machine learning algorithm that we have behind here. Right? And at the bottom, this is the answer. So if you click, uh, whenever you select a specific article here, like this one, transmission of COVID-19 in determined stage of the incubation, there is a familial cluster, you get all the details. Here you get the abstract, the author list, the journal, and so on and so forth. This data that you see here is all from the file that you have uploaded to uh, Ryan. Other things, you can do full text search. So there is a box here. You want to do full text search on the title or abstract or author of the, this list. On the left is very important part of the, the left panel is the article filter. These are different pan, uh, facets that will help you later on screen and filter your different articles. I will show how to do it. Okay. Uh, okay. These are the different uh, part of the uh, Ryan work. Let's go back to my uh, uploaded file. There is a question, doctor. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, so there is a question from a student. Uh, for engineering students, can we search through IEEE? Uh, actually, I think they have a, uh, the, uh, there are databases. Uh, for example, there is IEEE Explorer. It should help you search. And uh, the, and I think it should also be able to... Uh, I don't have access, direct access to it. I have to go to TNL and then uh, IEEE Export. But you could use that one too. As long the most important thing is that any database that you use for engineering or anything, there are other databases that don't have anything in mind right now. So making sure that you can uh, download the result, export the result. For example, you could use, for example, uh, Google uh, Scholar, but the problem with Google Scholar, they don't have any way to get the result. You can do it, but it will be by hand. So which means it will be very painful. So you have to do it uh, one by one. But there is no way on uh, Google Scholar to get the whole list. However, I believe I didn't uh, try it before. I think I did. I believe in IEEE Explorer, you should be able to get the result of your search into some uh, files that Ryan uh, accept. OK? Is it clear? OK. I'm assuming it's clear. So here that you see, so now what's happening, For I, I took that file. Maybe I should even show you the file, just uh, uh, show you file. Huh? Let me see. Let me put it in there. So sometimes people get a bit confused on what when I talk about those things. This is the file I got from uh, PubMed. Okay, it has. You don't have to understand the format. It's not important for you. But uh, this is a PubMed uh, format. It has a bunch of uh, things about the references. For example, the uh, this is the abstract. You see this big text. This is the abstract. Uh, what else you can see? Uh, this is the title and so on and so forth. And you have you have 10,000 of those. So Ryan will take this uh, uh, file and read it and put it here in a nice uh, layout so you can work on uh, that. So it's done. 
by the by the way this is uh, take a little bit of time okay if your uh, reduce uh, file is big so the, the the thing will take a little bit of time so as you see here now I get all my uh, references inside uh, Ryan. There are 10,000, as you see at the bottom. It's the search method. This is the name of the file. And it says there are 10,000. Remember that uh, for whatever reason, PubMed is limiting the number of uh, things that you can uh, download to 10,000. So which means if you, you have this kind of limitation, you'll have to figure out how to get them uh, in, uh, in batches, OK? So and this is your uh, workbench, OK? And I explained the different parts of the uh, workbench. We'll go back to this workbench, the live workbench, as we uh, as need. Okay, let me continue on the presentation. The first thing that you do in uh, Ryan is to detect uh, duplicate. Why this is important? Because many times, if you go to any database, and uh, you, I mean, the same article may be uh, put there uh, multiple times for whatever reason. There may be a mistake, or or uh, they made a mistake and they didn't figure out this out uh, the same. And this can happen uh, also or more when you bring in uh, data from different databases. Because in Ryan, you can upload more than one file. So you can upload two, three, ten files into a, a review. And uh, if you are bringing things from different databases, most likely they will be a duplicate. Let's, as we talked about duplicate, what I will do, I'll just click here, de detect duplicate, and see what, uh, uh, what will happen to this review and see if there are any duplicates. Okay, it will take a little bit of time. Okay, so so you, I help you duplicate. So you, as I just did, so you just uh, click on detect duplicates, and then it will tell you I uh, for this particular review that uh, there are ten potential duplicates. I say potential because uh, there, this is a long story, but uh, uh, duplicate detection is a long and uh, it's a long uh, standing research problem, and there are no uh, algorithms that can give you hundred percent accuracy. That's why we say potential meaning that some of the uh, duplicates that I will tell you may not may be wrong, or I, I may not even uh, be able, uh, sorry, I might not be even be able to uh, detect some duplicates. So what you do, so you have 10, and then you go on and try to resolve them, meaning that you click on the uh, the article that has duplicate, and you say resolve duplicate, and then it give you a cluster, so which means that these are the possibilities. And then you decide, this, is this a duplicate or not? If it is a duplicate, you delete it. If it's not, you just say it's not a duplicate. OK, this is the first thing you do. And then you start screening what it means by screening. Now you need to uh, examine your article based on the inclusion criteria that you have and decide if they are relevant or not. Something I, I uh, we mentioned about the protocol for a review. And one important aspect of the protocol of a review is are the inclusion criteria. So it, we uh, yourself or with your team, you should have sit, uh, you should sit down before starting a review and tell, okay, what are we interested in? Or to solve our question, we are interested in this uh, type of article, this type of studies. For example, if you are doing uh, some sort of study in uh, medicine, so you say, I'm interested, for example, only in female, so this is inclusion criteria, age be between uh, 20 and 25, okay? And I'm interested in only the inter uh, studies that will tell me about the uh, uh, blood sugar or blood, uh, uh, or uh, uh, heart rate, okay? So these are inclusion, meaning that this inclusion criteria, when I go to look at my uh, review or my article, if I, this inclusion criteria are not fulfilled, then most likely I will reject or mark this uh, specific article as uh, irrelevant, okay? Now you need to exclude, okay? Now, so we now we start the process of uh, including and uh, excluding articles. So the way you do it, so you select the article, okay, and then you just click include or type on your keyboard I. Okay, I will uh, just to give you an example here. So maybe ah oh, yeah, this is good also to know that the, the this particular uh, ten thousand uh, references have potentially two hundred and oops, I lost the two hundred, but then we can see it here. Uh, what is the ticket? Oh, uh, yes, here. It has 200, uh, let me make it bigger, so I'm sure you see it. 237 potential duplicate. I will maybe first go through the duplicate and go back to the screen, okay? So I click on end result, meaning that uh, these are duplicate. And you see this icon, it just means that uh, there is potential duplicate. Let's see if they, these are real duplicate. And then I say uh, result duplicate, okay? Now, uh, how many? One, oh, 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 sorry, sorry, I clicked uh, this. Sorry, uh, let's do it again. I have to be careful with my mouse. 
let's uh, take this one and then click resolve duplicate. Okay, make sure I don't mess up the ones. So it has, it told me there are two articles that are potentially duplicate. I look at them, let me just make it bigger because it's hard to see. So they have uh, vaccine design, they have uh, actually <laughs> same title. And it seems that even the, uh, the, uh, the, the abstract is, uh, is similar. Let's see the author names. There's a, okay, the author list is the same. And then this is journal article research. Okay, I see. So basically, this is exactly the same, uh, kind of the same article. It has the same uh, list uh, title, same uh, list of authors, same abstract. However, the, the source is different. One, this one is from a journal article, which is called Research Support NIH, uh, sorry, Frontiers of, uh, in Immunology. And this one is from uh, what we call an archive. This is a preprint, okay? So, which means in this particular, this is a duplicate. I will just tell, delete, delete this one. So, I don't like it. I don't need to deal with it. So, I just uh, say delete, okay? And then this thing will be deleted. And then uh, it will show me that I deleted one, I resolved one, meaning that because there were only two, I deleted one, so one is remaining alone. So there is no duplicate anymore with this guy. Okay, this is how you resolve uh, uh, duplicate. Okay, and then just to also uh, uh, show you the uh, the thing about including and excluding, let me clear the, this thing about duplicate. And imagine now you are working based on your. Uh, inclusion criteria, you go through this different uh, article and you look at this one and you think for whatever, uh, based on your inclusion, criteria, this is something I should include. I just uh, click on include and then I see uh, here the word Morad, meaning Morad has included this article, okay? For example, this one, I don't like it because it's not relevant. I will say, just say exclude. And then I, uh, my name will appear there. And here I'm not sure. So I'm not sure that I should include it or exclude. I'll just say maybe. And it appear in a gray uh, color in my name. Okay, this is what I do. So I go through different articles, and then decide should I include it or exclude it, or just maybe because I'm not sure. I need to look at the uh, full text to this. So if the article, as I said, is relevant, you just uh, relevant is you put include. If it is irrelevant, you put exclude. And you can also put uh, you customize it. So you put specific uh, tags and label. Oh, sorry, I, the mouse is. You put labels like uh, drug choices, uh, background art, and so on and so forth. And the way you put label, it's, uh, these labels are just tags that help you better understand your action and what the article is about. And also, if you are working in collaboration, uh, help you communicate with your uh, collaborators and they, so they can understand what you have been doing in this uh, article. Okay? And doing labels is very easy. I mean, you will select the article. And then you just go to label here and you put your label or you put a reason. Reason is just a special type of uh, labels, which means that it gives you the reason for uh, excluding a specific, a specific uh, article. However, doing this screen is a long process and all the filters that you see on the left will help you quickly uh, zoom in and zoom out in this long list of articles so you can make your decision. So you can filter them so you can combine filters on different facets. For example, you can say, okay, give me all the undecided, which means that give me all the articles that I have not worked on yet. Or show me all the articles that have a specific topic. This cloud, uh, word cloud is very important. What it does, so Ryan takes all the files, all the references that you give it to it, and take the uh, titles and uh, abstract of those uh, references and determine the topics. What are the topics of those references? And here are the different topics that have been extracted for this particular review. If you go to the, our live review, here are the topics. Let me try to make it bigger. Yeah, we need to work out a little bit on the size so we can see. So here, for example, I have, and the size of each word correspond to the, the, the number of articles that have this particular uh, uh, topic. Okay, this is one of the things that you can use to filter. Another thing that you can use to fil filter, which is extremely important, we introduce, like, usually when you filter, so you are, uh, as a human, so you have looking for uh, cues, okay? And these are cues are uh, through keywords, okay? If you look, if you see an article in uh, an abstract that has specific uh, keywords, then you may quickly decide to include it or exclude it. This is why we have on the left side, we have two lists, 
one for uh, keyword for include and keyword for exclude. And uh, you just put them in green and uh, red to give you just a, a quick uh, uh, alert that you should either, uh, that it's suggesting you that you should include or exclude uh, those articles. So using those highlights. There was a study that was done in the past showing that this kind of cues, visual cues, those keywords can help you quickly go through a, a long list of articles to make uh, this kind of decisions. Okay, and there are other filters that you can use. And let me go back here and I'll show you some of the filters. These are the include exclude. We talked about the topics. Uh, uh, you can uh, also work on the year. So if you are uh, interested in a specific year, interestingly, here we have 2021. I mean, maybe it could be an error. It could be an article that you publish uh, next year. You can filter by the authors. You can filter by the name of the journals. Here we don't have any location. So, oh, sorry. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I thought there was a, it was closed. So you can filter by your location. So Ryan extract based on the, what you provide to Ryan and try to extract the location of the article, the main language of the article, uh, the types of the publication you can also filter on it, the, uh, the language of the abstract, and if there is only uh, not a PDF to full text. Just for the uh, war uh, warning here, PDF full text are not provided uh, by default. You have to upload them to Ryan. So using all those filters, you can go on and on and do your uh, screening. Now, once you have done enough screening, which is in the particular case, the setting we have in Ryan is you have to have included and excluded 50 articles. Now you can ask for help from uh, Ryan by asking what we call computing uh, rating. The way it works, so there's a bit of technicality here, but it's very simple. So Ryan will learn from your decision. So you have thousands of articles, and you let's say you excluded uh, sorry you, uh, you included five articles and excluded forty five. Okay, based on this, it will learn a model, a machine learning model using this particular algorithm called support vector machine, and then based on uh, uh, what it sees, it will tell you okay, based on what I have seen so far, you doing in terms of inclusion and exclusion, then most likely you should uh, include this and most uh, most likely you should exclude this. And the way you present the result is through what we call a five-star uh, star rating system. It is the kind of thing you get, for example, if you go to a website like Amazon, so they have those, star, they use, a lot of websites use this concept of uh, stars to tell you this is good, this is bad, whatever, okay? And we use the same uh, visual uh, artifact for showing you the, the suggestion, okay? So what happens, so once you have enough uh, article, you click on compute uh, ratings, and then Ryan will give you those ratings. The greener, or uh, more the, the more uh, green stars, most likely you should include this uh, article. And the, uh, the more uh, red stars, the, then you should uh, uh, exclude those uh, articles. And this is an important aspect of uh, Ryan that will help you quickly uh, uh, say uh, quickly do the screen. In fact, we didn't we have done a study, so we can. On average, we can save you like 50% of your time. If you have to spend, let's say, 10 hours on your study, by using these uh, ratings, you can uh, you spend uh, on average five hours. In fact, and, uh, in some cases, you can spend much less. Okay? This is for the rating. Something that you can do in Ryan also, if you, if you are done with your review, or at any time of your review, you can export uh, a part of your review, so there is a export uh, fun functionality that you can use. So basically, you want to take out your review from uh, uh, from Ryan. You just export uh, features. Something extremely important in Ryan is that you can invite others to uh, work with you, because many times the the actually most of our reviews which we have seen are done by a team of collaborators. And one of the reason is the is the screening you want because when you, especially if you do something important, uh, is if the decision to include or exclude something should be done by two people to make sure that there is no bias. I mean, I may have my own biases, I may have I may uh, make mistakes. So I ask my uh, collaborator or two to help me make sure that we don't do the uh, we uh, take the right decision. And sometimes we do collaborator because the review is quite long, so we divide the work uh, amongst uh, us. So basically, if I have, let's say, uh, 30,000 articles that I have to go through, so I'll assign two reviewers for each 10 articles, and which means I need six, uh, six uh, reviews altogether. So inviting a review is very simple. So you go to the Ryan dashboard, and you go to your review, and just you click Invite. 
And then, uh, something also important that we have done is that since people will work in collaboration, so there are two choices when you work in collaboration. So either everyone sees everyone's work, I mean, you see what others are doing, or you don't. Why you, the, uh, which we call the blind mode. And when the blind mode is on, you cannot see what others are doing in terms of including, excluding uh, articles or putting labels. Why you don't want, you want the blind mode to be on is to uh, about bias. I don't want to bias your decision. You are human, right? So if you if you work uh, you work with me, you see me include things, and then you may be uh, enticed to also include them or to exclude them the same way. So to avoid bias, we have uh, uh, have this uh, feature of Raven with very uh, nice feature that people like a lot, which is to put the blind uh, mode on or off. Is if you are working with the collaborator, you can chat with them. So there is a small chat uh, widget that we have used. So here, for example, Hossam and Fadel are two collaborators, and they can chat with each other on the video. The red means that Hossam is uh, uh, offline, but Fadel is uh, online. If you turn off the uh, uh, the blind mode, you can go and see what others uh, are doing. And another thing I should mention here, there are some statistics that you see on the Ryan dashboard for each uh, review in terms of what has been done so far in terms of decisions. Oops, sorry. And then if the uh, blind mode is off, then you can see all the decisions made by different people. In particular, you should pay attention to the conflicts in, that, in this particular case. We see that Fadil and Hussam uh, did disagreed on some of the of the uh, articles in terms of excluding them or excluding them. So they need to uh, basically uh, go and work together to make the final decision. Which is basically, uh, is it something that we should uh, include or exclude? And then one of them has to, uh, if we want to have an agreement, one of them has to change his or her decision to uh, what was agreed on. Okay, and there are other features that uh, maybe I, I didn't mention, but these are the major features that we have in uh, uh, in Ryan. Of course, there is the feature of search. We can, I mean, we can show it now. For example, and let me see, see if we can uh, find something about uh, whatever. Let me. Uh, I want to share chloro chloro chloroquine, but the problem I don't remember how to spell it. Chloro. No, let's see. That. Let's ask for it. No. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So if I search here, yeah, there are 251 uh, entries with this word because there are a lot of things that have been said about using chloroquine uh, for uh, COVID-19. So we can uh, azithromycin, which is a uh, as it I think it's wrong. It's, oh. Yeah, it's hard to get uh, those. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see if it's better. Yes. Oh, yeah. Go, oh, yeah. Okay. And there are 140. Uh, this is an antibiotic that people use also to treat people with COVID 19. It's not a cure, but it helps in the treatment. So these are the, as I said, the different uh, way you can uh, search. You can as I also search by author. Here, uh, uh, you can, as I mentioned, the export, and there are other things that you can talk about. I think that's, uh, that's all. So if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Mourad. So there are two questions. Sure. So the first one on the left side for the inclusion criteria. Can we add other criteria or we are fixed to what we can see here on the screen? Yeah, this, uh, that's a very important question. So, the inclusion criteria is something that you have something that you have decided even before uh, going to Ryan. So you have a question, okay? Let's say you want to talk. Let's say this COVID nineteen, although it's a, a bit a vague question, it's a bit too generic. So uh, I have this uh, review about uh, vaccine and uh, uh, treatment for COVID nineteen. Okay, this is uh, I'm interested. However, let's say I'm interested only in uh, studies that have been done in the GCC. Okay, for people or uh, of a specific age, let's say from I don't know five to twenty-five. Okay, so this I'm uh, starting to deter, uh, to write down the inclusion criteria. Okay, and those inclusion uh, uh, criteria will would translate to what I see here. 
So we need, when I click on this, I see, okay, this uh, is this specific article. Uh, uh, does this uh, specific article fulfill my inclusion criteria? If it does, then I include it. If it doesn't, I exclude it. If I'm not sure, I just put maybe, which means that sometimes I need to look at the full text to be able to uh, make a decision. What you see here, because what we have done, these are, we don't know your inclusion criteria, okay? We don't have access to them. And they can be very, very different from one uh, studies to another, and uh, especially if you're talking about something in engineering versus in medicine versus in healthcare versus in environment. So here, uh, we just provide you filters that could help you quickly uh, get into those uh, articles and then using your inclusion criteria, make a, a decision. But the best thing that a magic that could happen is something I, I also wanted to work on, is that imagine you can write a, a, a narrative in English that says, okay, I am interested in articles when you give me a very detailed uh, inclusion criteria of what they are looking after. And my question I'm trying to solve is that given this narrative in English, can I take it and build a machine learning uh, an AI algorithm that will do, let's say, most of the work for you, which means it will take this 10,000 and give you, instead of giving you 10,000, giving you uh, uh, only 1,000, okay, or maybe 250 or 500. But this is something that doesn't exist. This is something I would like uh, to do. I'm not sure it's doable, but I would say it might be doable. What we have done instead, uh, in this particular, uh, as I mentioned, for machine learning uh, algorithm that we have, is that we look at what you do, uh, just for the sake of, uh, uh, imagine you included all of this uh, article, and then you included all of this. Uh, notice also that you can do bulk exclude and bulk uh, include by just using your uh, keyboard. Uh, how many did I ex uh, exclude? Uh, 33, I need more. Because if I uh, compute rating here, it will tell me uh, I need more, okay? Let's see here, exclude. Okay, so I have excluded 46, included six. Of course, I'm not going to do it in a blind way, but. Uh, Based on my inclusion criteria, I have decided this should be uh, uh, excluded. Okay, I just link uh, excluded. And this should be included. Now we learn by just looking how we build a model, which is we put them in some space, and we draw like a line in this space. And this line should, uh, based on what we have done so far, should uh, differentiate between the thing that you have included and the thing that you have uh, excluded. This is what the support vector machine uh, does. And then you give it a new point, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, compute I think now I can compute them. You give it a new article and then it tells you it should be on the, at the bottom or uh, 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 on the top or at the bottom of the, the line. This is the kind of thing we can do, but this is on, in a general fashion. Ne uh, the uh, next question. The next question is from Dr. Hadi. Um, from which database um, can he get articles from? I hope th this is what you want to know, Dr. Hadi. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, mainly what I want to know is uh, I saw that there is a search uh, a characteristic. Thank you, Dr. Murad, for amazing uh, uh, presentation. I, I recently joined Ryan and I really I'm, I'm trying to use it and more and more. So the search is better from PubMed. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. Now I see your slide. Okay. So the, 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 the so the search that we I showed here when I was searching here, this is a search in the thing that you have already uploaded to Ryan. Okay. This is what you see here, okay? I said, okay, for uh, all the things that I have in Raya, show me as it promising. However, the file that you have uploaded here, this file, this file, you have to bring it to me. Uh, we didn't, actually, this is a good question in the sense that in the beginning when we started doing Raya, we said, okay, should we connect Raya to existing uh, databases? Uh, this is too hard and too complicated for many reasons. It could, for legal reasons, for... Uh, Money reason for uh, technical reason. The legal reason, sometimes you, you don't even have access to them. You have to have, or money reason, you have to have a subscription, which means that we have to figure out how to have a subscription. We cannot give subscription, otherwise it cost us tons of money. This is the job of uh, libraries. And sometimes there is a technical problem is that 
Many databases keep changing their format and keep changing the way you get data from them. So to avoid all of this problem, we said, okay, you go, you use your preferred database, and there are, I don't know, there are hundreds of databases that you can use. And remember, our users can uh, are coming from different uh, backgrounds. So we, although most of our users are from the biomedical uh, uh, area, that we have users from engineering, from uh, biological science, from environment, from business, from uh, name it, education, so on, so forth. So most, I mean, each uh, category of user, they have their own databases. So they go to the database, they do their, they do their uh, search query, they put their keyword inside the, the database, they get the file, and then bring the file to Ryan. The only thing we ask you is that because we cannot just, there is no magic. We can, I mean, some, sometimes people bring me a PDF file that has uh, citation in very weird format, they cannot read it, right? It's not, I mean, it's too, it's, it will be like magic. So we, uh, uh, you have to just give me the file that you got from your data in a specific format. We support, as I said, many formats. In this particular case, we have EndNote, BibTech, PubMed, RefMan, RIS format, and so on. These are the main format that we uh, we, uh, we support. I hope it's answered your question. Yeah, thank you so much. And sure. I have a question. Would you be able? Is it, would be would you be sharing the slides? Because yeah, you share that. No that would yeah, be sure. great. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. And also, Munia mentioned that this is recorded, so that you can have that to. Munia, I need also. I mean, if you are, uh, if you can also share with me the recording, I want to put it on my on our YouTube uh, channel as well. Inshallah, no problem. Uh, there is another question, Doctor. Sure. So the question is, I have downloaded papers. How to open to Ryan? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. So, so as I said, so when you uh, the first upload you do is for the reference file. Now, as I said, one of the things that you do is that you uh, you want to uh, check the PDF or you want to check the full text. So you basically, it's very simple. So you select the specific uh, file, uh, sorry, reference, like say a reply to whatever, whatever it is written here. And then you click on upload PDF uh, full text and you upload the file from your local uh, machine. So which means uh, we don't provide you any PDF. You, this is your job to get the file from, uh, uh, from whatever database, okay? Let me, I just put, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter, matter what I put here, but just uh, as an example. And then I, uh, I got a PDF file from my, uh, from my, uh, oops, sorry, from my uh, local machine, and then I just upload it, okay? You see here, upload as public and private. This is obsolete, we have to remove it. So in the old days, we allow people to uh, upload the file and make it available to others, but we remove that uh, feature now that anything that you upload will be just uh, for you. No one can see it. For you, of course, and your collaborators. If you see, there is an icon here, a small icon. This is a PDF icon. And then if you, uh, and the file is here. It was added to abstract or the detailed view of the article at the bottom. If, if I click on it, it will open a, re a reader, Adobe Reader, and then I can look at uh, it. Okay. But then the nice thing that with this feature is that uh, your collaborator, they don't have to have the files, they don't have to upload it, so they'll have to go and uh, they can log in from anywhere in the world and they can see those uh, PDF files. Something we are working on, which turns out to be a little bit tricky, so it needs a little bit of technology we, we have to de develop, it's to be able to highlight the PDF and store this data inside uh, Ryan. Uh, question? Do we have all the other questions? No questions. I think we are done with the questions. Yeah, excellent. Feel okay, free to, uh, to yeah, just uh, I mean, feel free to register to Ryan, go to sign up, and then if you have any question about Ryan, there is a small icon here. Oops, I need to move this. I, uh, the small icon at the bottom it says uh, there is a question mark. So if you click on the question mark, you can send your question to that question mark. It, it, it will come to the Ryan uh, uh, support system. Not a lot of thank you, Dr. Murad, in the chat box. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Murad, for the wonderful say, uh, presentation. Uh, My pleasure. For the nice presentation, amazing tool. In fact, this is really, يعني, Allahumma barik, this is a, a great contribution for the whole community. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think this is it. So for everyone that is doing a systematic literature review, uh, working on thesis, dissertation, any writing paper assignments, the graduate learning support in the Office of Graduate Studies is here to support you.
hesitate to reach out at gls at um, qu.edu.qa. So do not hesitate to reach, inshallah. And on behalf of the Office of Graduate Studies at Qatar University, we would like to thank you, Dr. Murad. Thank you so My much pleasure. for the question. Sure, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. I hope you benefited from uh, from this uh, uh, tutorial. And uh, feel free to send me any question directly or through the question mark. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.